Ludlam Measurements Incorporated has been manufacturing quality radiation equipment since 1962. Our objective is to provide a quality product that meets the needs of the user in a package that will withstand rugged use in harsh environments. To that end, the instruments demonstrated in this video were designed for durability to give many years of service with a minimum of maintenance. This emergency response kit contains a Ludlow Measurements Model 2241-2 survey meter with the 1 microcurie cesium-137 check source mounted on the side, a Model 44-9 Geiger-Muller alpha-beta gamma detector, a Model 44-2 sodium iodide gamma scintillation detector, a detector cable, and batteries, all in a hard protective case. The 2241-2 is a microprocessor-based portable digital survey meter. It has programmable parameters for two detectors. These parameters are set at the time of calibration to enable one detector position to display readings in counts registered in a given time, such as counts per minute or counts per second. The other detector position will display readings in exposure rate, such as Rankins per hour. The procedures for changing the parameters are outlined in the owner's manual. Persons familiar with the procedures should be the only ones allowed to change these parameters. The operator controls are clearly marked on the front of the model 2241-2. There is an audio on-off switch that controls the output of the Unimorph speaker located on the side of the instrument, a fast slow response time switch, a toggle switch that selects between detector 1 and detector 2. The toggle switch arm must be lifted up to change between detector positions a push-button switch for the LCD backlight, a reset push-button switch, an off rate meter scalar switch, a connector for the detector cable, and the scalar start push-button switch located in the end of the handle. The display has four main digits that will show the current count rate or exposure rate. The decimal point will automatically adjust displaying the most accurate reading. A minimum display value is pre-programmed during calibration. Two additional digits in the lower right corner are used if the number being displayed is larger than four digits. An example is, if the number 123,456 were being displayed, the main four digits would read 3, 4, 5, and 6, and the two smaller digits would read 1, 2. The letters OFLOW will illuminate under the four main digits in an overflow condition. In the rate meter mode, overflow indicates that the radiation level is high enough to cause the instrument to display unstable or unreliable readings. In the scalar mode, overflow indicates that the number being displayed is over one million counts. If the count rate exceeds the alert or alarm preset limits, then the word alert and or alarm will be illuminated on the display under the four main digits. The word overload will illuminate if the detector being used is exposed to radiation intensity greater than the detector's maximum operating limit. The word counting will only illuminate when the instrument is in the scalar mode and the start push button is depressed and released. When the battery power is low, the battery symbol will illuminate. The instrument calibration will change less than 3% from full battery power to low battery indicator. Change the batteries as soon as possible after the battery symbol illuminates. The units that are used to show the count rate or exposure rate will be displayed next to the four main digits. Not all of these symbols will be illuminated at the same time. The C slash M symbol means counts per minute. The instrument is displaying the average number of electrical pulses sent from the detector in each minute. The K in front of the C slash M symbol means thousands of counts per minute. The symbol C slash S means counts per second. The K in front of the C slash S symbol means thousands of counts per second. The R slash HR symbol stands for Rankins per hour. This is the most common unit of measure used in the United States for gamma radiation exposure rate. When a small m is illuminated next to the R slash HR symbol, it means that the displayed measurement is in milli Rankin per hour. It is used to divide the relatively large R per hour units down for a more accurate measurement. One milli R per hour is equal to one thousandth of an R per hour. 
When the Greek letter mu is illuminated next to the r per hour symbol, it means that the displayed measurement is in micro Rankine per hour. This will indicate that the r per hour units have been divided down even further. One micro r per hour is equal to one millionth of an r per hour. The SV slash HR symbol stands for sieverts per hour. Sieverts is a unit of measure used internationally, but is not generally used in the United States. The Model 44-9 GM detector is capable of detecting alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. It contains a tube that is filled with halogen gas and has a thin mica window. A stainless steel screen helps protect the window from damage. Caution should be taken when using the detector around vegetation or any sharp objects because the mica window is easily damaged causing the detector to fail. A plastic cover should be used to protect the window when the detector is not being used. The plastic cover can remain in place when surveying for gamma radiation, but it must be removed to detect alpha or beta radiation. The Model 44-2 sodium iodide scintillation detector is primarily used for detecting low levels of gamma radiation. It will not detect alpha or beta radiation. Inside is a 1 inch by 1 inch sodium iodide crystal coupled to a photomultiplier tube. The aluminum housing makes the detector very durable, but the internal components can still be damaged if the detector is dropped on a hard surface. To prepare the system for operation, install two D-cell batteries into the Model 2241-2 battery compartment. Open the battery compartment lid by twisting the latch counterclockwise one quarter turn. Note the negative and positive marks on the inside of the lid. Install the batteries, matching the battery polarity with these marks. Reversing the battery polarity will not harm the instrument, it will only prevent it from functioning. Close the battery compartment lid by pressing down and turning the latch one quarter turn clockwise until it latches. With the audio turned off, very fresh alkaline or rechargeable nickel cadmium batteries will enable operation of the unit for approximately 200 hours in temperatures ranging from minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. If the audio is turned on, more power will be used and the battery life will be shortened. The standard detector cable sent with each kit is made from coaxial cable with C-style connectors at each end. Caution should be used when handling the detector cable. It is possible to receive an uncomfortable electric shock from the energy stored in the cable even if the instrument has not been used for some time. Connect one end of the detector cable to the instrument by firmly pushing the connectors together while twisting clockwise one quarter turn until it latches. Repeat the process in the same manner with the other end of the cable and detector one. Refer to the calibration paperwork sent with the emergency response kit to determine the detector configuration during calibration. In other words, see if detector one position was calibrated with the model 44-9 or the model 44-2. In this demonstration, the Ludlow Measurements Model 44-9 is considered to be Detector 1, but your kit may be different. Also ensure the audio switch is in the off position, and the fast slow switch is in the F or fast position. Toggle the detector select switch to the Detector 1 position. In this demonstration, Detector 1 position has been programmed to display counts per minute and was calibrated for use with the Model 44-9 detector. Turn the off rate meter scalar switch to the rate meter position. When the instrument is in the rate meter mode, the rate at which radioactive events are being accumulated by the detector will be displayed. This mode is used for general surveying. At startup, the instrument will go through an initialization sequence that will light up all of the characters on the display. Then the firmware number and version will display. After the initialization sequence is complete, the instrument will automatically adjust to the appropriate range for displaying the current background radiation count level. Allow the instrument to accumulate counts for at least 10 seconds before beginning a survey. Mounted on the side of the Model 2241-2 is a radioactive check source used to test the operation of the instrument. Next to the check source is the calibration sticker. The calibration sticker will show the check source reading taken during the calibration of the instrument. Open the door of the check source holder and place the protective screen of the model 44-9 directly on the center of the source area. After 5 seconds, compare the reading from the instrument to the source reading taken during calibration. These readings should be within plus or minus 20% of each other. If not, the instrument should be recalibrated. 
Pull the detector away from the check source for a few seconds, then return it to the test position while observing the speed of the display response. Again pull the detector away and wait a few seconds. Toggle the fast slow switch to the slow position and return the detector to the test position while again observing the speed of the display response. The response should be noticeably slower than the fast response position. Toggle the fast slow switch back to the fast position. The fast response is used at higher count levels. The slow response position is normally used when displaying low numbers which require a more stable display. Toggle the audio switch to the on position and confirm the external Unimorph speaker produces an audible click for each event detected. Toggle the audio switch back to the off position. In an alarm condition, the audible portion of the alarm will be heard even with the audio switch in the off position. The model 44-9 detector is now being moved closer and closer to a radioactive source. When the radiation raises to a level sufficient to exceed the preset alert threshold, the word alert will be illuminated on the display with the count rate. Moving the detector away from the radioactive source and depressing the reset button will reset the count rate and alert indicator. The alert warning is only active in the rate meter mode. Again, the model 44-9 detector is being moved closer and closer to the radioactive source. When the radiation raises to a level sufficient to exceed the preset alarm threshold, the Unimorph speaker will emit a continuous tone and the words alert and alarm will be illuminated on the display with the count rate. Moving the detector away from the check source and depressing the reset button will stop the audible portion of the alarm but will not reset the display. Depressing the reset button a second time will reset the count rate and all alarm indicators. The alarm is active in both the rate meter and the scalar modes. In this next demonstration, the model 44-9 will be used to show the detector's response to different types of radiation. Turn the audio switch on the model 2241-2 to the on position. The model 44-9 is held with the detection surface a few inches from the surface being surveyed and moves slowly around to survey the entire area. When the detector approaches the alpha source, the displayed count rate and audio clicks will increase. Notice that the alpha particles are only detected when the model 44-9 is moved very close to the source. An alpha particle has two protons that give it a double positive charge. It is also a large and heavy particle when compared to other subatomic particles. Because of the double electric charge and the mass, the alpha particle is highly interactive with matter. This means that an alpha particle cannot penetrate deeply into material. Because of this, the alpha particles are unable to penetrate the outer layer of human skin. If the alpha particles are inhaled or ingested, they cause internal damage to body organs. Therefore, alpha particles are considered to be internal hazards only. Outside the body, the alpha particles present little or no hazard. The alpha particles can be blocked by a thin piece of paper. If the count rate goes down considerably when the paper is in place, then the source is mostly alpha radiation. If the count rate stays the same, then the main part of the source is not alpha radiation. Remember during this test, the detector will still be picking up the background radiation. A beta source is now being surveyed with the model 44-9 detector. As you can see, the detector is able to detect the beta particles from a much greater distance away from the source. A beta particle is an electron that has half of the electrical charge of the alpha particle and much less mass. Because of its small size and single negative charge, a beta particle can penetrate matter to a greater depth than an alpha particle would. Beta particles can penetrate the dead layer of skin and damage living tissue. Therefore, betas are considered both an internal and external hazard. Plastic as thin as 1 16th of an inch can be used to shield beta particles. Most metals can also be used to shield beta particles. When doing field surveys, a piece of paper may be placed in between the radiation source and the detector. If the counts drop back to background level, the source is probably alpha radiation. If the detector is turned over while surveying a beta source, the aluminum will block the beta particles and the count rate will go down but gamma emission from some beta sources will penetrate the aluminum and still be counted. Gamma radiation does not contain any mass whatsoever. Instead, it is an energy wave that can travel thousands of feet in air. A gamma radiation source is now being surveyed with the Model 44-9 detector. The Model 44-9 can easily detect the gamma radiation from as little as a few inches to several feet away from the source, depending on the activity of the source. 
As the detector is moved closer to the source, the count rate in audio clicks will increase dramatically. Gamma radiation can penetrate deeply into the human body and can cause widespread internal damage to the body organs. Therefore, gamma radiation is considered to be an internal and external hazard. Very dense materials such as lead, concrete, and depleted uranium are the best at shielding gamma radiation. This sheet of aluminum will partly attenuate the gamma radiation but will not block it completely. But when the source is placed back in the lead fill container, the gamma radiation is completely attenuated. Now only background radiation is being counted. Now we'll change over to the model 44-2 detector and survey the same gamma source. The model 2241-2 supplies the high voltage to operate the detectors, so it is necessary to turn the instrument off before changing the detector to prevent the possibility of electrical shock. Disconnect the model 44-9 detector and connect the model 44-2 detector using the same cable. Toggle the detector select switch to the detector 2 position. In this emergency response kit, the detector 2 position has been calibrated with the model 44-2 in exposure rate. The display will now show the radiation level in micro Rankins per hour. Turn the off rate meter scalar switch to the rate meter position. The model 44-2 is much more sensitive to small amounts of gamma radiation than the model 44-9 detector. Therefore it can detect a gamma source from a further distance away than the model 44-9 detector. At the same distance from the source, the model 44-2 can detect a much smaller amount of gamma radiation than the model 44-9. Notice how the model 44-2 is held while surveying. The end of the detector should be facing the source and held a few inches from the surface being surveyed. The detector is moved slowly around the area while monitoring the display and listening to the audio clicks. The model 44-2 will not detect alpha or beta radiation sources. The model 2241-2 also has a scalar mode. This mode is used for counting low levels of radiation in a given time period. A scalar count time of 12 seconds is programmed during calibration. Both the model 44-9 and the model 44-2 can be used in the scalar mode. The model 44-2 is being used for this demonstration. Turn the off rate meter scalar switch to the scalar position. Turn the audio switch to the off position. The end of the model 44-2 is placed directly on the radioactive source and the count start push button is depressed and released. The word counting will illuminate on the display during the count cycle. At the end of a count cycle, the number of electrical pulses sent from the detector in that time period will be displayed. This number can be used to calculate the quantity of radiation in the sample. The model 44-9 is used to detect alpha, beta, and large doses of gamma radiation. Each interaction with radioactive energy will produce an electronic pulse. The model 2241-2 will display the number of electronic pulses corresponding to the amount of radiation detected in each minute. The model 44-2 is used to sample much smaller doses of gamma radiation. Interaction with gamma radiation will produce electronic pulses.